Cars like F1, F3 and LMP have lots of aero and lots of downforce and therefore need to be driven in a different way. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to drive high downforce cars in sim racing. To start, we first need to understand the impact that aerodynamics and downforce has on a car. The wings of a car work in the opposite way to that of an aeroplane. The wings will push the car into the ground, or rather the tyres into the ground. The more vertical load that you put on the tyres of a race car, the more grip they produce. So therefore, the faster a car is going, the more downforce it produces and the more grip it creates. With more grip, of course, that means you can travel around corners faster, brake later and accelerate harder. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that you can go into a hairpin bend absolutely flat out and expect the car to turn. There are limitations to aerodynamic downforce, but it does mean that you will pull much higher G loads, much higher cornering forces in a faster corner than you will do in a slower corner. So let's go into this in a bit more detail and really understand how driving a high downforce aerodynamic car affects your driving technique and how to extract the most speed from these types of cars. So first of all, we're going to take a look at how aerodynamics and downforce affects the braking when you're on track. And it has a few interesting impacts on braking. In most high downforce cars in sim racing, you can use peak pressure. You can use 100% of the braking force available but only at high speeds. Of course, this is because when you're at high speeds, the wings of the car are working hard, pushing the tires into the ground, and you have the most amount of grip. But you always need to consider your current speed and how you're decelerating. For example, if you're traveling into a corner at 200 miles an hour, the braking force that you can put through your tires is significantly higher than the braking force that you can put through the tires at 60 miles an hour, because at 200 miles an hour, you will have a lot more grip. So for example, if you're braking from top speed down to second gear in a hairpin, you will actually need to begin to release the brake pressure as the car is decelerating and slowing down. If you are already going quite slowly, say in a complex of corners, then you won't be able to get to your peak braking pressure. And if you do, it will just cause the tires to lock up. We see a lot of our students and a lot of our drivers brake excessively to the point where the tires will lock up. When the tires are locked up, you won't be decelerating at the optimum amount and you'll also be increasing the temperature on the surface of the tire. With this higher surface temperature, it then means that the tire won't be performing at its optimum for the next few corners as the tires are too hot. The next thing to think about when you're driving your high downforce car in sim racing is trying to maximize your minimum corner speed. Now that does sound quite complicated, but the minimum corner speed is exactly that, the minimum speed when you're traveling through a corner. We want to make this minimum speed as high as we possibly can. And the reason for that is with higher speed, we have more downforce and therefore we have more grip. So this means that you actually want to take the smoothest arc that you possibly can through a corner. When you take a more rounded line, you're minimizing the steering angle that you have to put into the car. And when you do that, you're making the corner less tight, therefore meaning that you can increase the minimum corner speed and get that increase in downforce and grip. Next, I want to talk about the throttle application, the way in which you get on the accelerator pedal as you're exiting a corner. One common mistake that we see with drivers is that the shape of the throttle, the way that they get on the accelerator through different types of corners is always the same. Now, of course, if you're coming out of a hairpin in an aero car, you will have less grip than if you're coming out of a fourth or fifth gear corner with much higher speed. And therefore, in those faster corners, you don't need to be quite as progressive on the accelerator because the car will accept a more aggressive throttle application. 
To put this into context, imagine driving at Monza. Exiting the first chicane, you'll have to be quite smooth when you get on the accelerator. The minimum corner speed through there is very slow, and so you don't have that extra downforce helping push those rear tires into the track. Compare that to coming out of the Ascari chicane or Parabolica, which are fourth or fifth gears. At this speed, you will have much more grip, and so you can be slightly more aggressive on the accelerator pedal. Now that you've learned a little bit more about being quick in an aero car, check out these other videos which I think you'll love, which detail other techniques to improve your lap time in sim racing. Cheers, make sure you subscribe to the Drive61 Sim Racing channel, and I'll see you in the next video.